Well, hello! Hello, hello! Alright, it is, it is me once again, and this is the third and final act of Dungeon Munchies. I love this game. I absolutely adore it. I think it is outstanding and wonderful and great and perfect. Uh, summarizing where the story has come, uh, you play a zombie. You wake up and a ghost named Simmer says, Hey kid, I'm gonna teach you how to cook. And then she teaches you how to cook, but turns out that cooking is uh, illegal in this world. Like, well, was illegal, because thanks to an astrological event, Everything is magic. Literally everything is magic. And cooking becomes illegal because eating things gives you their power, which creates chaos. And a, then basically, in a response, humanity creates an authoritarian dystopia. But the sun also becomes magic. And the sun is sentient. And the sun decides that it wants to pursue other options, leading to the heat death of the planet. And now you and your cool ghost friends are trying to find a way off the planet. Can't believe that's where this this story goes. It starts off as a fun game about cooking, and then you get to Act Three, and it just turns into Cronenberg-esque body horror. So, um, so far, yeah, I'm in. Now we are in the final dungeon. We are trying to get to the warp gate to get off this planet once and for all. Uh, they, the energy that is currently powering the dungeon, uh, we have learned, is all these people in these cool tubes. Isn't that cool? Isn't, isn't this great? Don't you love this? Uh, let's see. We are in Act 3. I can now finally upgrade other characters' weapons, and I have access to... Or I don't. Dungeon Munchies, did you, did you freeze on me? How could you let this happen? Weird. Oh, I think I know what happened. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's probably what happened here. Uh, let's see. Console settings. No. No, what I want to do is unplug my arcade stick. I think what happened is why, yeah, for some reason I'm on a different control setting. It's not using my keyboard and mouse. Using mouse? Wait, using mouse? Oh, no, 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 not in Turkish, not in Spanish. I can do German, but we're not going to play this game in German. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, who would have guessed that like our yeah our, our charming carefree lives were built on un countless untold suffering of millions deep and in underneath the pit? Who would have expected that? Not me. Not me personally. I just drink Bakari sweat. All right, we are here and uh, we are teleporting. We are zooming and oh my god, what the fuck is going on? Uh. For so long we were stuck in that unspeakable hell. We couldn't move, we couldn't talk, only endless thinking and concentrating. I've forgotten what it feels like to have legs. I could only scream inside my head at an endless scream that no one would ever hear. No one could save us, no one could answer us, and no one cared about us. Like zombies, we lived without ever feeling alive. We existed without ever knowing the purpose of our existence. If I feel this is bad, I'm gonna sort of like duck myself a little bit lower. Boop. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna chill down here so y'all can read. From the deepest, darkest parts of our mind, Putrid appeared. Putrid answered our prayers and reached out to us. So Putrid is this, um, basically an entity of body horror and nihilism that is trying to, rather than continue life, is sort of trying to egg the characters in the story. They're sort of abandoning their hope and, their, and just to kind of accept this existence of basically being in the Matrix, but body horror. Yeah. Future would descend among us and put an end to us all. Basically, and in response to, it seems, like the end of the world, most of humanity fell into nihilism, and that created putrid, which is this entity that is just sort of egging on this um, this blissful, um, basically, state of, of calm and death. Yeah. Please rid us of our bodies and wash our minds away and the suffering that is life. Yep. That sounds like it. Oh, no. And if you do nihilism hard enough, you turn into a monster. Alright. There we go. Like, reframing all of these horrible monsters as these things that were people, but less have been, like, infected by a virus, but more have given up on trying to live. And embraced this uh, this sort of um, promise of a nihilistic sense of, of peace in in, in this like they've accepted their despair instead of trying to to find a happy ending for themselves anymore, and it is very sad. All right, now I have the blueprint for the laser rifle because now I get cool tech weapons too. All right, uh, let's see. I got my cool Articunos and no 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 no. This is oh god, what the fuck. This game really doesn't stop, does it? 
I want to go back to my, my easy, peaceful, carefree life. Oh, I got the true life sword. Okay, got the true light sword. All is good. And uh, I'm still being attacked by... Uh, basically, they're just carpenter-ass monsters. Let's, let's just call them what they are. Corp Explosion build is still is still doing mad work though. So hopefully I'll be able to Oh, sounds like a boss. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna let my my fool birds take care of all this. Yep. And yep. So I'm running a build called Corp Explosion, where basically I kill a bunch of stuff, and um, as I kill things, their souls explode and do damage to the things around them. And I'm also using a pretty imbalanced power-up that lets me... Ordinarily, you're only supposed to have one of these birds. I have four of them. Yeah, it's the thing. It's the, it's the thing. It's it's from the story. Alright, we are we are heading deeper. We have to go deeper. Now, let's see. Is there anything that I really want to... I kind of want to try a bleed build. I haven't done one of those yet. What else do I want to actually... What would I want to give a shot to? I've increased my movement speed. Alright, so I've got the max level blunt. Um, I, I have filled the world with gluten, like gluten smoking, so I have 80% increased movement speed. Let's see. This is the addition in Act 3. You, you're able to actually upgrade the stuff that you got from the first part of the game. I missed a couple of items. It's not the end of the world. Uh, let's see. That's pretty sick, actually. Increase axe and hatchet damage. Uh, let's see. Get the flies. Get wasps. Hmm... Yeah, I have a feeling I'm going to want to keep the blunt. I wish I could upgrade the Blood Lotus T, but oh well. I mean, what do I have? I have I'm basically, I'm still running Corpse Explosion. And you know what? I kind of want to run... Here we go. Increase summons and increase their max health. There we go. Just just keep getting more summons. It's fine. Let's see. The True Light Sword hits real fast. Normal attacks at 50, 50 damage. A fast rifle, 30 rounds per magazine. All right. Yeah, the Popsicle like also does massive damage. The Popsicle is spooky, though. I feel like... I'm not good enough at the game to be good at the, to play with that, but I do love the um, pineapple pizza is pretty strong. This build seems pretty good. I'm just gonna kind of upgrade it as I go. If I get more comfortable, I might switch to the popsicle, which massively increases my damage. All right. So Nickel, if you're just watching, tuning in, is a robot, an AI robot that we convinced we uh, that we were the last surviving human, and now they have to listen to us. They have a lot of TV stored in the, in their memory banks that we're gonna watch later. All right, so collection established. I've collected more data on the soul extractors. Let's see. I never thought there'd still be people living down here. If only we could rescue them. Nope, proposal rejected. As an administrator for the city, I forbid anyone from interfering with the soul extraction process. But why? I have concluded that the energy supplied by the extractor serves to maintain the integrity of the entire underground city. Yep, it turns out that our, our peaceful, happy life is maintained by the suffering of others. Oh, she does have horns. They're just on her headset. The magical energy provided by the extractors powers all aspects of life down here, from supporting the improbable buildings to powering the lights for all these years. Even the energy that she uses is powered by the soul extractors. And that's why they've never had any earthquake damage. If we shut down the extractors, the entire city might collapse. Let's see. Now the Stargate reports make a lot more sense. Powering it puts such a strain on the energy supply that it would destroy the entire city. So what I'm hearing is, these capsule people can either keep the roof up or power the Stargate, but they can't do both. Tiny Grill is the cutest. Tiny Grill is the cutest, the the, the second cutest character with antlers on this stream right now. Maybe the be maybe number one. Tiny Grill might be number one. Let's see. Shit. So why not? Is this a quarter stockholder meeting where you decide to cut our pay? Hey boss, are you really gonna go get out of here after after gaining power? Well. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, everyone should watch as, like, as an ace as her ace apprentice. Like, Streams his dungeon exploration journey. Let me, uh, ooh, it is time. It is time for me to become a barrel. Oop. I'm a little barrel over here. Just, just a little barrel. Doing a little barrel roll. All right. He's streaming from down there? Where can I sub? Actually, um, there's a sub button down there, but I don't need the money. So, like, please, please put that money towards any charity instead of subbing to me. All right. I also love the implication that your character has been streaming this whole time. 
All right, let's uh, head it down and uh, I might do what Reyna was suggesting there. Eventually just kind of swap out for basically an unkillable build. But at least for now, I think I'm going to keep with summons, if only because I think they're cool. So many enemies. Oh gosh. Um, just keep rolling, just keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. Yeah. Normal isn't, like, it feels like you have a lot of flexibility. Like, things in normal don't, on the normal level, you don't feel that bad. Or normal, aka sous chef. Ooh, weapon. Uh oh, uh oh. No, go back, go back. The Toxic Tempest? Oh. Okay, that's horrifying. Oh no, it's getting darker as I get further down, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this is, this is gonna get spooky. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, bye, yeah, bye. I'm gonna leave this to all my, my, my cool birds. I'll take care of all my problems. Ooh, ooh, health! Also, the the, um, the healing guava has been an MVP. Like, so every one of the items I have equipped, as you cook dishes, you can equip them as items. One of the ones I have causes me to gain health back every time I take damage. Yeah, these birds are popping off. It's really fun just how much this game lets you go absolutely off the chain with your builds. And I can upgrade the healing guava too, but being able to just like get 10 health back every time I get attacked has been such a huge deal for me. There's corpse explosions going off, and yeah, I can just kind of waltz through the bullet hell and just grab the healing guavas when I take damage, and then my birds will basically kill everything else. I don't have that much to be concerned about. Ooh, what's this? The bone shield! The bone zone. Oh, that's, that's not bad. Not a fan of that. Alright, uh, let's see. Oh, getting multiple guavas sounds pretty sick. Alright, I got a flaming halberd now. I'm picking up a lot of weapons. I guess they really want you to get on the... get that nice power up going into Act 3 as quickly as possible. Once I, start, I mean, once I finish upgrading my more core build, I'm definitely gonna get more into the guavas. Maybe start getting into the um, the. There's the one item I picked up that lets you get a. Oh, the bone shield, the summons. There's the one item you pick up that. Where is it? Do 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 healing guavas. I don't have enough to do this. All right. Oh well, I gotta save up. Bone Shield. Blocks 35 damage and raise for full recovery. Shield Bashes can harvest soul shards that spawn skeletons. Skeletons? Oh, hell yeah. I actually haven't tried damn like, I haven't tried magic at all. I should probably give that a shot at some point. Oh, cool. This is both... You're getting some really interesting stuff here. It's both an axe and a spear. Cast several seconds of poison rain at the target, inflicting three damp magic damage, as well as any dagger-related effects. That's pretty cool, too. So it's both a magic item and it's a... Uh, so it's magic and it's a, a dagger for poison over time builds. There's some really cool stuff here. All right, I'm gonna just put like some points into guavas just so I just, I'm basically unkillable. But there's an item you get where when you do melee damage, you heal a little bit as well, which seems like a pretty solid way to go about things. All right, or you get a shield. That's what you get. It's not a full heal, but you get shields. Seems pretty strong. All right, get the guavas, and we're good. And I get some skeletal minions, and we're good. Yeah, I have a feeling like, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I bet this gets really busted, doesn't it? Oh, cool, now I have like little, little skeleton dudes. Got Tom helping me out. All right, let's uh, let's head down. Yeah, this is. Oh boy. Get that 
guava. All right, hell yeah. Oh, cool. Item. There's a food that replaces 90% of your health with shields. Let's see, it makes, like, let's see, with shields and that one that makes dagger attacks give you layers of shields as well. Yeah, so basically you just get a high speed build that is basically unkillable. Right now, I'm just, I'm vibing with my, my army of skeletons and the super birds. All right, we got a boss. Starting computer. Connection established. I have gained partial control over a portion of the soul extractors. Analyzing interview. Look at all these cool skeletons I have. Look at them. Look at them just chilling back here. <laughs> I've got my army of birds and gun skeletons. How cool is that? All right. Analyzing interference. It's 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 mostly just screaming. It's coming and it shall return. The once scattered sh soul shall become whole again. Senseless cruelty will come to an end. Meaningless suffering will come to an end. The pain, the emptiness, and the helplessness we have to have to endure will come to an end. Together with the great being, the cross-dimensional voyager, we invite you to witness the spectacle of capitalism. All right, let's see. Simmer wants you to tell, to tell you something. They are very worried about you, so please try to stay in one place because Simmer cares about you. I'm so touched. Everyone here is still watching your stream. I can only decide to mute them to preserve your audio quality. <laughs> so in this section, no one else could follow you into Act Three. So they're all watching you on, like they're all watching you as a stream. And Nickel is your moderator, and that's just canonically what's happening. Love this game. All right, let's uh, let's fight some bosses. Here we go. Nickel's so cute. They're all very cute. Nickel's especially cute. Okay, let's see. It's a recording from a security camera. All right, so I'm assuming this is the protagonist and this is whoever becomes Putrid. I often find myself staring at the pods, wondering what it must feel like to be in one of those. We quickly found this, this facility once our armies had seized the city. It helps us understand how the Allied Axis were able to build and sustain this massive underground city. Once a person is anchored inside one of those extractors, a fragment of their soul is extracted and converted into energy. They are then fed by the nutrition pipes. Once their bodies are fed, their soul regenerates. The extractors do their job and the cycle repeats. So basically, there's no enjoyment in cooking. It all comes back to food, right? This is a story about food. It's like these people are being, like, their relationship, like, food is about relationships, it's about your connection with yourself, it's about your connection with other people. They are being basically force-fed. There's no joy, there's no connection. It's it's terrible. It's awful. I hate this. They can't be replaced by clones or any other organism. They have to be humans who have lived their lives. Once inside, they must be kept constantly awake. This endless source of energy powers the lights, the climate control systems, the free Wi-Fi, and even maintains the integrity of, this, of the superstructure. We have to feed more people than like more people to these extractors every month to preserve our way of life. Just thinking about it makes me sick to the stomach. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that cool? It's a metaphor for capitalism. And what is good, Reploid? For the good of mankind, we occupied a city that wasn't ours, and for the good of mankind, we chose to maintain social order by terrorizing our people and subjecting them to harsh punishment. Not good. For the good of mankind, we torture our own, selling, sealing them in pods to suffer for eternity. I've never had your father's resolve, and I can't imagine anyone else that can stomach that job. Nope, Dad just really likes power. He's not as noble or upright type as you think he is. Alright, so I'm assuming that our, our character has some connection to like the big bad here. I thought with my power I could help people live throughout our terrible circumstances, yet every time I look at these extractors, I don't know what the hell I am supposed to do. But I feel the same way. And in this situation, we should take a deep breath and go eat some good food. Now, Lieutenant Nepotism, <laughs> I'm the one who forced everyone to eat our nutrition cakes. I don't think I deserve to enjoy food. No, nope, everyone enjoys to eat good food, especially when you've been thinking too much about soul extraction. You know, you ever just, like, get the munchies after you, you think about some soul extraction? Whomsa Monks just hasn't been there. Alright. What's with the getup? Yeah, this is definitely the main character. Alright, so what's the deal? What is the what is the main character? Let's see, what kind of restaurant makes you go dressed up like that? Let's see, I don't want to get caught by my dad, so I have to go and hide myself? <laughs> the restaurant in question moves around quite a lot. Without my level of access, I wouldn't even be able to find the front door. Okay, so the main character is the son of the the head of the fascist food government and is a frequent patron at Grill and Simmer's restaurant. But the food's pretty good, and the chefs are cute. And the place you can always eat, is that the place you always eat at when you're, when you're feeling down? Yeah, but you eat there every day. 
Yep, your mind is like your stomach. You can eat breakfast, but you're still hungry in the afternoon. You can feel productive today, but still feel empty tomorrow. It's all a normal part of life. We just live to fill that bottomless hole over and over again. If we leave ourselves empty, we just make ourselves more vulnerable to what life throws at us. Do you believe that living brings happiness? Like, look at this. You can see, like, you can see his smile and optimism is gone. I think living brings suffering. People pursue love, friendship, and dreams and power to mitigate that suffering. Those people in those pods are alive in the purest sense of the word. They can't do anything other than live and exist. Their lives aren't filled with any fluff. For them, living is a state of constant torture. So this guy, he's now looking at this and thinking, like, this is, this is, no, this is what life really is. Life is not good, actually. So I get how you're feeling, but it feels like you're just tormenting yourself with guilt. It's like you're beating yourself up over the past and over problems you can't resolve right now. You may feel like that's the right thing to do, but if you continue to feed that guilt, you're just going to end up feeling empty and sick. Are you asking me to be like your father? Should I just forget about their suffering in life and then be as an ignorant official? So you have main character's dad, who's just ignorant to suffering, just doesn't think about it. Ping, who is focusing on suffering, and then the main character who's like, maybe there are ways to live life and make connections without suffering. Yeah, the, the, the Chad nameless existentialist versus the virgin nihilist. <laughs> oh no, I lost my cool skeletons. I worked hard on those guys. Oh, guavas. Give me, give me my guava. All right, guavas and soul energy. All right, uh, let's jump through oh, this horrible maze of spikes. And now, yep, yep. Here, here's, here's Ping. Yeah, I agree. By the time you discover this video, I will have already departed from this world. In the midst of my anguish, I heard the murmur of a greater being from the depths of my soul. So he's completely given it to nihilism. And I'm assuming he becomes, yep, yeah, putrid. He becomes putrid. It is wandered across countless universes, seeking out and liberating those who live in despair and suffering. So because he's given up any chance of joy or enjoyment or connection with life and focused only on despair and suffering, he is attracts this being known as putrid to the world. It brought me to another world, a world that we may one day be able to inhabit. I was able to bask in warm sunlight and witness vast blue oceans. I walked across sandy beaches and felt the gentle caress of a cool morning breeze. It's a paradise reserved for those who have surpassed life and death. Those are pleasures that our people have, have never been able to experience. Trapped in this dark dungeon, we've been forced to maim, lie, steal, and cheat just to keep people alive. And I am more than certain that our world has come to an end. We will never be able to power the Stargate. Once this is revealed, humanity can only expect despair and death. There is no future for us in this universe. However, putrid can save us with interdimensional sorcery. If we just, if we just give in to the eldritch being, it will be fine. It will shatter its soul into tiny pieces. It will spread across as emerging with every human they can find. If we just merge into the big eldritch hive mind, it'll be fine. Nothing bad can possibly happen. Body horror is the answer. Alright, so he's, yeah, it's the first one. We'll sacrifice body and soul to Putrid, allowing him to descend and save us all. I wish everyone the best in their next life. What the fuck? Alright, I am I am Shinji Ikari. I have I have to stop this. I it is me. I am I am Shinji. Uh let's see. Anything else I wanna I wanna make? Do I have any other secondaries I can use? The true light sword is a melee secondary. I'm going to make the, the katana just because I think it's sick. Do I get to do judgment cut? Yes, I do. Yes, I get, I get to do judgment cut. That's that's worth it. All right, I'm going to go back to the birds, though. Yeah, this, this game is super sick. All right. This is horrifying. This is horrifying. Welcome. He's been waiting for you. You two have been brought to our world in the same manner, he says. Appeals to life like, have brought you here. While appeals to death have brought him here, so this is the existential point. It's hope versus nihilism. My character is an appeal to live and find happiness, and this is a the appeal to death for future to come and just uh, basically wipe everyone from existence. So I have now the game that started as a cute cooking game about making bananas into into food, as like or into like banana pudding, has turned into a, a existential battle of good versus evil based around food and I have a full max upgraded blunt that makes me move very fast oh there it is there it is it all returns to nothing it just comes tumbling down tumbling down tumbling down all right this one skeleton's gonna stop it this is the real hero this is the John McClane of the story oh no that's bad 
You return to our savor, only you can end the cycle of endless suffering. Let us never return to this world, return our souls to oblivion. Yeah, I think I did a bad job here. I think I made a mistake. Oh, it's okay. Nic uh, look, Nicholas here. It's fine. Got a visual feed on the zombie and on Putrid. Mercury 2, 3, and 4 have been deployed. With the zombie and the Mercury units, the probability of defeating Putrid is 100%. We're going to defeat Zodiark. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. We've been defeated by Zodiark. You cannot win. You must escape. Okay, if you're surrounded by an existential force field, it is so far negated all attacks directed towards it. Uh, despite Simmer's objections, I must report in our current object. I have detected Rogers of CO4 converging on your on your location. With the crisis at hand, we will not be able to support you with any assistance. But here comes Simmer. Let me talk, you dumb robot. <laughs> don't worry about us. Because we're still really, really powerful. And when Simmer says don't worry, that's usually a bad sign. I love that Grill is the Simmer translator. She's like, no, she's talking out of her ass. Don't listen to her. One, two, four, like 124 behemoth C4s have been detected near the elevators. Okay. Uh oh. No! My wife! Oh boy. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna be fine. Oh god. We're not gonna be fine. Bad things happened. Okay, do I have to run? I'm just gonna run. That feels like what I'm supposed to do. Oh. That's what this is! It's- you have to go through a fucking obstacle course at the end. That's why I had to go through this goofy obstacle course on the way here. It was all the setup for the- that, that's actually a really cool level design to have you go through this and then have you go through it in reverse as a boss fight. Oh boy. Oh no, I activated sticky keys! No! Damn. That's that's what happens when you're... I'm gonna, you know, for the sake of this, I am going to... Yeah, sticky keys is the real... Whenever you have any, any game that requires you to press shift off it, and it's like, oh no, I activated sticky keys. Same thing with Apex, it's happened to me a couple times. Yeah, that's true gaming. Yeah, yeah, more like stink keys. I don't think I've ever actually had a use for sticky keys in my life, but I definitely, uh, definitely been ruined. I had a couple, like, yeah, perfect levels in Ultra Kill Ruin specifically. Oh, come on, we're gonna, we're gonna make it. Okay. Woo! I have not played Act 2 of Ultra Kill yet. I've only been playing Strive in this lately. Once I finish up Dungeon Munchies, I might start playing Ultra Kill again. Alright, let's see. Stay inside the yellow lines and teleport out, and we are fine. I can't wait to one-shot a boss and have people get mad at me again for being too good at video games. It's gonna be great. Alright. Let's see, you're probably as confused as I am right now. Who could this be? Oh, it's Rob! Rob! That's that's impressive. Ultra Kill found a way to get better. The game is ridiculous. Definitely maybe the best like boomer shooter, whatever. Like, I, I, I wish I had my hand cam again so I could air quote. It's boomer shooter. Yo, it's so Rob is an artificial intelligence created from the memories of Rob, our boy Rob. I spent so long evading Nicole's detection. She probably labeled me as delicious. She would probably label me as a malicious program and delete me instantly. I was only able to slip onto the ship. After you guys tore a hole in that barrier, I've been looking for you, and I know that my theories are correct. Let's see. So I thought I was the only survivor after Peter brought along the apocalypse. Sorry, I have reason to believe that I have met another survivor. Okay. I don't really... Let's see. I don't remember him because after doing that person a big favor, all my memories of him were wiped clean. I'm assuming that person is the main character. Yeah, I need to do the same thing. I gotta get myself some air quotes. Or just start live, like, streaming my actual face again, and just so I can, you know, use... They have the, the most accurate hand tracking to my actual hands. Let's see. Memories are gone. All his stuff. Any sign recording evidence of existence had all disappeared. And that's when I realized that the manifestation ritual must have caused this. I'm guessing that was the ritual used to bring you into our world in order to stop putrid. The price of performing that ritual is the complete disappearance of its initiator. As I am from this plane of existence, I am unable to detect anything relating to this ritual's initiator. However, since you live in a different plane of existence, you can probably see these things he's left behind. 
The original owner of your body must have left an important message that only you can access. Well, before we solve that mystery, let's try to return you to Simmer and the rest of your gang. So the main character is an extra-dimensional being that's in this one body? Oh, that's it. Oh, no, that's it. That's it. It's metatextual. It's... It's me as the player serving as a metatextual character. I am the being that has been brought into the world. Me. Me, Ricky. I am now I am now an actual character in the story. How cool is that? I love when the fourth wall breaks. All right. So future is draining energy from the barrier. So let's see. Let's go. Let's go find my, all my friends. Yeah, I am now canon. Oh, hell yeah. All right. Got my skeletons. Got my birds. Everything's good. I'll get my army back and we will be set to go. Gotta figure out which skeletons are our grills, which one are simmers, and which ones are mine. Oh hey! It's my buddies! Simmer told us to escape, but to where? There's not too many there's too many of them, and it's only a matter of time before this place gets flooded. Alright. Why, why are you always the first one to whine at the sign of trouble? Then why don't you teach me how we're supposed to fight these things? Okay, like, wait, no, look, I'm back. You're just supposed to wait. Forget everything I said. We've got this in the bag. I, think I had to carry the whole team while you were gone. I had everybody on my back. Oh, Tyler. Tyler's a good one. They're all really good. Kamul, Tyler, Emma, Grill, Simmer, Nickel, everyone. Everyone in this game. I just love all of these characters. Let's see. And Uncle Z. Poor Uncle Z. Can I cook anything up here? I can upgrade my guavas. I want to upgrade. I want to get the last upgrade for the. All right, I'll get this up soon enough. I want to get the last upgrade for for my 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 super cool and, and super awesome summoning items. All right, the Lord of the Forest is sacrificing herself on the front lines. Surely we can't stay back and be a bunch of cowards. It's like we have to fight to earn our hope. Big Vine. Oh no. I hope Big Vine is okay. If anything happens to Clifford, I'm going to kill everyone in this dungeon and then myself. Alright. <laughs> Big Vine, no! We were supposed to watch anime together! Alright, what's good, Nickel? Yeah, Professor Shroom is infected. Everything is going south. Things seem pretty bad right now. Oh no! Nickel, no! Nickel blue screen, no! All right, Rob, you have to save Nickel. I can't let anything bad happen to the to the, to the VTuber. All right, me and my birds are gonna we're gonna go do some work. Well, this seems bad. No! Oh boy. No, there's so many things on Simmer's bucket list. It's the terror tubby. <laughs> That's horrifying. Everyone dies, you and your friends, me and my horrible family, we'll all be dead. We'll all be dead, we'll all be dead. Mr. Putrid is generous to grant us the gift of death. This gift gives us joy that exceeds this mortal realm. Boo! That makes no sense at all. Grill, we're both running out of mana. So we're going to use the secret move we've developed. We're going to become Common Rider W. The hybrid soul, so Mercury retrograde quantum block. Oh no, it's a blockchain. Oh no. No, don't, don't, don't give in to crypto. It's not going to work out. <clears throat> the market's going to crash. What? Uncle Z? Okay. Oh! <laughs> okay, that, that's actually very funny. Uncle Z, I thought you lost your memory. I did, but then I forgot that I had Alzheimer's and then it all came back. Uh, they go, look at these goofy jokes. Look at this, though. This is adorable. In order to keep the girls from using up the last of their mana and disappearing, Uncle Z comes up and puts them in a glass jar.
All right, here we go. Me and my, my, my super sick birds are gonna go in. Collecting soul power, everything should be fine. Yeah, there we go. I love every character in this game. Like, even, like, I'm really looking forward to seeing where some of these characters come. I imagine this is going to be the kind of game where everyone gets their moment. Like, Uncle Z just got his moment. I want to see... I just really want to know if Grill and Simmer are girlfriends. And also if Tyler is a virgin. There's so many important character details in this game. Oh boy. Oh, that's bad. Uh, birds? Birds? Why are my birds not fixing everything? Alright. Alright, birds are fixing everything now. It's fine. It's fine. As long as they keep attacking, everything will work out. As long as I keep grabbing guavas, everything will be fine. Yeah, I just, I, I wanna, I, I'm just very curious how this story is going to... Like, almost more so than anything else. This game has already gone in so many directions and places I hadn't expected. I'm very curious what the finale is going to look like. Alright, let's get the... One of my items lets me take damage and generate soul power. That will let me actually keep making more birds. So I, no matter what, I can just keep pumping them out. Yep, there we go. I just want everyone to be okay. All right, Teratubby is down. All right. Like, let's see. He may not have the means to force you out of this dimension, but it works both ways, so you are powerless to stop him. Yeah, the birds are super sick. However, Mr. Beauty, it can erode your will to stay in the world. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> so, Putrid's plan is to get my character to give into nihilism. In, in abandoned hope and a desire to continue. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen. All right, Uncle Z, what's the deal? I'm glad he placed his hopes and trust onto you. It was the right choice. He came back. <laughs> Uncle Z, we missed you. Grill kept being mean to me after you left. To be fair, Simmer actually deserved at least like half of it. Ah. <sighs> All right, I'd love for you to stay around longer, but his summoning spell for me is running out of time. You know how this works, don't you, Simmer? You're, fast, you're sacrificing the, what's left of your soul to maintain your identity and memories, and this will be the last time that we ever meet you forever. But since my soul's about to go to zero anyway, I'm going to use it to restore your magic. Aww. Uncle Skeleton. The Stargate Project is not a hoax. A colony world does exist. Okay, so there's there's someone else out here, and that's that's actually from another dimension, and able to use magic and can rival Putrid. But who are they? Okay, I'm actually getting a little bit emotional. So Uncle Z has been like basically a, a goofy joke character this whole time. When Simmer brought him back, there wasn't enough of him to really bring him back in a full sense of self. So now he's using the last bit of his energy to one restore their their lives, but also in his party words, he was just he's happy that they learned how to cook and that he got to see them again. You girls are incredible. To have chosen life even in such dire times. There's nothing more noble. So please accept the rest of my soul. And that's the end of Uncle Z. How many people do we have to lose just to open that Stargate? What's the point of living if I'm the only one that's alive? All right, the ancestral recipes that I had refused to teach you are hidden in the Sarka... Sesafahara City Hall. I said they're despaired from the government purges. So there's secret ancestral... <laughs> secret ancestral recipes. All 
Alright. We're gonna thrive, we're gonna live, and we are going to prosper. Alright, Rob. Okay. Wait, it's Rob! Wait, oh wait, they know each other? Wait, Rob worked for Grill? Alright, so director, I mean former director. You've changed quite a bit, and I'm sure both of us have very long stories to tell. I transferred Nickel to the ship's main computer to prevent her destruction, and so that's where he was living. The problem is she takes up a ton of storage, so I was forced to shack up in this display. So he's just in like the little the 420 display. That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I accidentally gave I, while repairing her, I accidentally gave Nickel access to my memories, and as you can see, now she hates me. <laughs> All right, let's go get these ancestral. Let's go get. Let's let's head out and get these ancestral recipes. Simmer and Grill's notes on cooking. With the old recipe books accounted for, it's time to exper new experimental dishes. Oh hell yeah! By completing Uncle Z's ancestral recipes can only be achieved through exercising arcane cooking skills and multiple uh, forms of magic. He promised he would teach us only if we became exceptional magic users, but then bad things happen. Future completely saw through me, and if I hadn't opened up those holes in the lower level, he wouldn't have come back to life. Uncle Z wouldn't have had to die. So now Simmer's already coming back to blaming herself for everything. But there's Grill right there. Nope, nope, pulling you right out of that self-blame. You are not the, like, the person at fault here, and you don't owe anyone anything. You don't have to, nor should you feel like you have to do everything. There's no reason to beat yourself up. You don't have to do anything like, on your own. You have other people, and the people around you, like Uncle Z, love you and they want you to continue living. Hmm... Their dynamic is so good. <laughs> did we just, did we just like go into the feelings dimension and leave the apprentice? Yep, yeah, we did. So we're gonna use recipes, we're gonna enhance our skills, and then we're gonna do it. Bareheaded builds are about to become viable, oh hell yeah. Oh no, they've gone from being my teachers to being my managers. This is terrible. All right, uh, let's see. Let me explain, my Android wife consented to, oh my God, oh boy. Rob built an Android wife while he thought he was the only person and still left out. And now Nickel has access to all of his memories. Rob, come on, man. I bet Rob would send red super chats to his favorite VTubers. All right, so someone, that person that everyone keeps like, helped him achieve a digital firm, and then everyone's memories of that person were erased. All right, so don't like. I love how their their solution to this was just like, hey, just like don't don't think about it, don't think about who it is. If you think about who it is, you might screw it up. All right. Oh no, Clifford is contaminated. Oh no, Professor Shroom. Now you cut his tail off right away to stop the infection, so that shouldn't be a problem. Also, he's not in a coma; he's just car sick. Okay, Clifford is fine. Everything is fine. Good. All right, let's see. So Vine lost his vision, but if we put him in some muddy water, he's gonna, he'll be fine. Do I get a disability stipend? Oh gosh. I love that most of Vine's lines are about watching anime and asking about health benefits. It's like, man, why do I do this job? The benefits here suck. Oh no, Professor Shroom.
Yeah, Big Vine is like very relatable. He's just here for the vibes. Well, that's that's kind of that's rough right there. So we're going to quarantine Professor Mushroom, and we're going to just like see what happens as he's increasingly infected. All right. So what's what is it? What's the cool mission that Uncle Z gave them? Even if we put all of our hopes on the zombie, I still feel helpless in the face of our inevitable demise. I can only wait as the universe decides to kill or spare me. Well then, can I interest you in Professor Shroom's weapon collection? I'm sure there's something in there that will help you with your anxiety. Yes. Well, isn't that the notorious Warhammer from the third? There, oh, there was a third world war. Cool. Like the shotgun here increases its user's bloodlust. How did he get his hands on this stuff? Well, I'm not really sure, but Professor Shroom, who might not be on the level, definitely was obsessed with human warfare and technology. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, like, I haven't trusted Professor Mushroom ever. Alright, so now that Professor Mushroom is out of the commission, Kamul's gonna have to start building weapons for me again. <laughs> like, commenting on, on Simmer's growth. It's called Growth and Introspection Grill. It might have come a bit late, but I'm cute, so I know you're gonna forgive me. Definitely a thing that straight women say to each other. I don't know. I feel like I we'll see where I end up with Professor Mushroom. He's always giving me weird vibes. But I think it's mostly because he's growing out of he's growing out of a, a piece of sentient wood. That, that is true. He did make a sword out of grill spit. All right, that'll that I'll, I'll forgive him for that. Let's see, Petrid uses C4 nutrition cakes, the water supply, and the internet. And the internet to expand its influence? Yeah, you're, you're not wrong, actually. You know what? Everyone here is bad except for Big Vine. Big Vine is the only, I'm putting all, I'm all my, all my, I'm betting everything on Big Vine. I'm deep in the Big Vine camp. Big Vine is my Oshi from now on. I'm done with Grill. I'm moving on from Grill. Friendship with Grill over. Big Vine is my boss now. I also love that the internet gets implicated here, so it's Putrid has been using the internet to spread influence. Hence why the AI systems were shut down or infected. Hmm. So we now know that, oh no, it's Cone. So now we know that, so the the reason that Putrid hasn't been successful at destroying the dungeon until now is that it seems like something or someone stops him every time. And now we're revisiting the plant revolution. I wonder how this one worked out. Okay, what's what's the new dish? He might, uh, wait. All right, okay, what's it gonna do? That's the fun part. He might throw up, explode, or turn into a girl. We'll never know until he swallows. I'm hoping that it turns me into a girl. We strayed too far from proper cooking. <laughs> Let's see. The hearty heartburn borscht. Unlocked multiple stomachs. Switch between different sets of stomachs and weapons on the fly. That's actually kind of cool. Alright. Uh, final summon upgrade. Hell yeah. And... Can I make any new weapons? I get a remote bomb? Okay, that's cool. Uh, scorpion tail hook. Yeah, being able to have multiple builds is kind of cool. So how do I switch between them? Oh, tab. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, cool! That's such a...
such a nice feature. I wish that it had that. Like, it had that earlier. So let's say I want a... What kind of build... What, what should I try? Maybe guns? How about guns? Every shot landed by a gun type weapon. Like, there's so much you can do in this game. Every shot landed by a gun increases shooting speed up to a maximum of 50%. Increase all damage inflicted, increase damage taken. Let's do it. Let's see. Spread disease carrier status to energy. Let's see. Blocking attacks, hidden blades, shields. Stunned enemies, magic chili, let's see, do do do, deep cut with dagger type weapons, bow weapon. Alright, increases bullet output for all weapons. Alright, that sounds cool. What else do I want for this? I'm just gonna let's go back to let's go to the like, these are the combined recipes of the experimental ones they're working on. There we go, get that one too, the apple pie. Fire and exhaust, one extra bullet. All right, we've got that. I'm gonna take the, let's see, where is my guava? Guava, guava, guava. Cause that's just been so good. Oh yeah, and the pink drink to reload from dashing, you're right. Which is dashing instantly reloads guns, okay. And let's grab healing guava, healing guava. You're here somewhere. Middle from the bottom, here it is, the dried guava. Got it, thank you. All right, and now we're gonna get the laser rifle. And as a secondary, let's see, Shadow Fang. Yep, there we go. Let's see how well this one works out. I'm rooting and shooting. The light gun? Yeah, all right, portable execution device. Yeah, this seems good, this seems fine. Yep, yep, we're, we're, we're gaming now. This is gaming. Yep, 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 I'm, I'm having fun. And what is this? Making scarab protein powder, okay. Oh. I really wish that The one thing I, I do wish about some of the things I've got here, I do, as much as I do enjoy, and I think that it's like, it's really, the popsicle's really, really strong, taking extra environmental damage too is a pain in the butt. Uh oh, scorpions. All right. There's like a whole area down here. Yeah, I missed a couple holes, didn't I? Gotta go fill those holes. I'm sure there's recipes down here too. Oh boy. Or at the very least ingredients. Oh, hell yeah. Warhammer 22K. <laughs> 
Of course there's a Warhammer reference. Why am I surprised? And what's down here? Oh. Just, just some King Cobras. It's fine. All right. And that's the centrifuge. Got it. I love this game's sense of humor. I was reading a review the other day, kind of wondering how this game had landed with people. And one reviewer put it really well, like, this game feels indie in a way that not a lot of even indie titles feel anymore. Like, it's definitely rough around the edges. It's not a perfect experience. There are things that definitely could stand to be improved. But it's got so much heart, and it's, it's so good at executing what it wants to do. Like, it's hard. I think if you release it down with this game and meet it where it's at, it's really hard not to find it charming. I've got so many resources now. Let's make sure I don't get burned. Got it. Oh no! Bad things are happening out there. All right, enables 100 crack fist when empty handed. Attack speed cannot be, wait, what? Damage output based on movements increases. Damage output increase based on movement speed? And the Kenshiro build? All right, okay. I'm gonna take damage output increase based on movement speed. All right, I'm 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 excited for bare knuckle brawling. I'm gonna upgrade this a little bit. Okay, cool. And then I should be able to, oh, hey. Oh no, it's a sweet potato. Oh no! Oh no! They the plants have invented capitalism. All right, we need to we need to come in here. We have an evil inter interdimensional deity to deal with, but you know what the real evil interdimensional deity is? Capitalism. Grill, we have to stop this. All right, Grill, come on, come on. Yeah, like, Petrit is here because we fucked things up. All right, let's see. What do we have here? The Desert Jail. This slow gun fires a wide, most effective medium range. Two rounds per magazine. All right, I'm going to give the Desert Jail a shot. And then beyond that, let's see. What else do we have here? Yeah, if, oh, if only we could be better. A secondary weapon that even babies can use. It's literally just a bomb. All right. Let's go back here, equip this. Actually, I might want to use the laser rifle just because it seems like it's 20 damage. No, versus 180. Yeah. Let's see. How bad can it possibly be, right? Oh god. Well, that's pretty good. 180 damage per shot seems seems okay. Especially when I can instantly reload by dashing. Ooh boy. Ooh baby. This game really just lets you go so hard on getting like builds that feel very broken. Now I have a flamethrower, too. Cool. Love that. And I think we're good. Oh, no, 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 no. Got him. Uh, let's see, and get up. Uh, I took a good 
good amount of damage there. But, ooh, let's get some guavas. I, I imagine a, a flamethrower is going to be a lot of fun in this game. All right, I got a flask. That means more weapons. Sand sharks. Get the healing item and then dodge to get a quick heal. Oh. And, alright, let's see. Maybe. I'm assuming there's gonna be something down here. Yep! And where are we? Where are we now? Dealing with sharks. Okay. Alright, that wasn't that bad. These shotguns are ridiculous. What if I use both shotguns? Because I do have Shadow Fang. No, Shadow Fang's a secondary. Oh, wait, yeah, I could use those. I could have a double shotgun build. There's something that increases shotgun damage specifically. Oh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, oh. Oh god. I'm curious about the unarmed build now, too. I want to be Kenshiro. Ancient magic scroll that makes smoke shark. Okay. And we're in there. Like swimwear. Going down, 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 down. Okay. Uh, let's see. Up, up. Up, up, up. Up, up. Up, up, up. Feels like nothing good. Commander Cactus! The zombies infiltrated our protein farm. Wait, they're farming protein? Uh oh. I thought he told us to retreat the zombie respect and did not incite anything. Nope. Commander Cactus is in charge. Let's see. So we've been great. Like, the enemy's capabilities have been greatly exaggerated through the enemy's despicable disinformation campaign. Oh, we'll see about that. Alright, and we're through. Let's, let's make some stuff here. What can we make? Powdered Shark Cartilage. Fix his health at 1 and gain 100 shield points that regenerate at 3 per second. Oh, Raina, you were mentioning this. Damage output increases by 10% for every active shield point? Attracts one scorpion to aid you. Oh. You can get a ground pound. I can get a ground pound with my whole ass. Oh, you were mentioning this one too. Gain a shield there. So, Powdered Shark Cartilage... Well, I'm not going to need that anymore. Wait. Causes... Because 99% of your health is shields. Oh my god. This is ridiculous! I'm gonna max that out real quick. Uh, that seems like it's really, really good. I'm gonna drop my shooting speed and I'm gonna grab the, where is it, where is it, where is it? Yeah, the Blood Lotus. So no, my health is fixed at one. I have 190 shield points that regenerate. My damage output is increased by 13% for every 10 active shield points. And because my health is fixed at one, I get, I'm basically doing double damage. How cool is that? Let's just like go, let's go ham. All right. No, I don't have enough insight. I don't have enough insight to make the flamethrower. Bummer. All right, double shotguns. Oh God. 
some of those shots are individually doing 500 damage. Hell yeah. This is this is gaming now. Now we're now we are really we're we're really gaming here. Sweet potato meat. <laughs> I'm just an engine of death now. I'm just an engine of death. I'm the real monster in this dungeon now. And I got the rune stone. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm back. I enjoy fighting the, the funny plants a lot more than the horrible body monsters. Oh, and it works with corpse explosion too. Oh boy. Well, this is a fun game. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, like, I don't feel bad about fighting the funny plants. Like, they, they tend to be terrible to begin with. They're the, literally the pumpkin Gestapo? Wow. There's, like, there's no subtext here. There is zero subtext there. Yeah, the, um, your health bar always has a long nose. It's just less noticeable. Get it, nose. It's less noticeable. Yeah, definitely wasn't ready for to see the phrase pumpkin gasapo, but here we are. All right, I can get a flamethrower. Do I want the flamethrower? Maybe. Induces intestinal contractions and enables fart kick while empty handed. What? What? You get Kinshiro, but you just, like, you have fart kicks. What's, this is going to be an interesting game. Alright, I'm going to increase my damage based on my movement speed, and we are just, we're just going in. Yeah, I'm going to experiment a little bit with bare hands, too. Let's see. So this is the restaurant I was talking about. They move around a lot, but you just have to follow the scent. Ah, oh, this is the most delicious thing I have ever tasted. Who comes up with this stuff? Normally, I would have I would have fled at the sight of the necromancer, but that's all in the past now. And I don't have any reason to fear or hate her anymore. Yes, yay! Never in my wildest dreams could I pictured myself asking the evil ne necromancer to cook to cook her cursed dishes for me. But here we go, eating food makes oh, so they do have someone to cook for. It's the plants. Aww. Hell yes. Hell yes. We're gonna help. We're gonna do another revolution. But this time we're gonna do an egalitarian revolution and make a better society. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna beat up Cone. She's at least promising one meal a day. It's better than anyone else is getting. Political power in this dungeon should be shared by all. We must work together to accomplish this. Wait, is, is the the poop? Is the poop the one going to be the great leader at the end of this? Is, is, is the poop going to unify everyone? The poop that tells everybody these chocolate ice cream? The revolution will begin in the kitchen. Hell yes. Oh, hell yeah. They're going to feed them performance enhancing foods. And then the plants are going to become a, a powerful army. Oh, wait. Oh, no. So what's the real reason I took the plants in is... 
to add vegetarian dishes to your repertoire? No, you can't cook your employees. That's bad. All right. Simmer, you've gone mad with power. Again. All right. The Kiwi Special Forces. All right. This, this build is comical. This is so funny. Just like knocking off end game enemies in two shots. The pumpkin soup blender makes pumpkin, like, Pequant pumpkin stew. It's impossible to make pumpkin soup without one of these. Why? Don't ask. Just get one yourself. It's true. Trying to make pumpkin, like, any kind of gourd, or, like, pumpkin soup or butternut squash soup or anything without a blender to puree it is miserable. Yes, you can technically do it, do it without it, but do not. It is terrible. It's like the one time I made macrons without a... And I had to whisk them by hand. Whisking egg whites by hand. That was one of the worst cooking mistakes I've ever had. I bought a blender immediately afterwards. Or um, an electric whisk afterwards. Oh no! Whoever the, whoever the leader is and how they it won't change my reality, I'm a replaceable and consumable part of an invisible machine. So basically, the pineapple feels that they don't have actual power or agency, and they're about to fall into nihilism. No! No! The rotten tree is trying to radicalize them to... Basically... Oh, they... Fascistic nihilism! No, we have to get in there. We have to teach these pineapples that a better world is possible. All right, I have to keep these these fruit from getting doomer pilled. And also make sure that I'm collecting as many items as I can get. All right, the high frequency fruit knife makes kiwi jam sandwich. This knife cuts at the molecular level, perfect for preserving, e preserving every atom of nutrition. And I have cactus meat too. We are, we are gaming and moving. It's gotta keep all these fruit from getting doomer pilled. This is so funny. Just running through everything, instantly reloading my guns by dodging. I'm just playing Double May Cry. I'm just playing a stylish action game now. A stylish action game where I have a preposterous amount of health. Half moisturized plant makes the Cone Legion uh, pie. Plants whose minds are just developing are perfect for cooking due to their reduced aggression? Oh boy. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about Dungeon Munchies whenever I think about it. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm playing Ultra. I, I made the Ultra Kill build. <laughs> yeah, this is how I feel about it all the time. I'm just like, I don't know what I expected from this game, but I don't. It was never this. All right, here it is. Corn, you have to do it. You have to beat up the pumpkin Gestapo. Yeah, they are. They are literally just fascists. So what's what's over here? What 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 recipe slash item slash what have you are they hiding from me? Ooh, ooh, what is it? The space splitting ice maker makes cactus ice cream. The, the, it's chilled with with energy from a dying universe from a universe experiencing heat death. Cool. Yeah, this game goes extremely hard. And like we touched on it before, it's like the gameplay loop might not be the like the most intense thing ever, but it does a good job of letting you mix things up enough that it always feels pretty fresh. Get it fresh, it's food. 
All right. All right. Got to beat up the cone. I got him this time. Protesters have been spotted at Steep City and Mount Askin area. They're unhappy about the water and electrical outages as well as the housing prices. Wow, relatable. It's like many plans are now openly opposed our rule. We must send our forces to restore order. No, this can't go on. Is violent suppression all we can think of? That will only harden their resolve. We must increase the intensity of our suppression in order to make them understand the legitimate authority of this government. Oh boy. Well, I feel bad for the cone, but like... The zombie has broken through. He's actually literally here. Alright, time to negotiate with the cone. Hmm. Bring out the social stability battle cruiser? Oh no. Alright. Alright. Cone, you did this to you did this one to yourself. I'm sorry. So much damage that I just end fights like I'm ending his phases instantly. I'm on Su Chef right now. The thing is like the equivalent of like a medium difficulty. too reckless and took some damage it's fine now i know what his, his moves are i'm not gonna get hit also i know that how to damage him really. gotta make sure that i get on top of him There we go. Got to defeat the fascist ice cream cone. That's definitely a sentence that you say when you're playing Dungeon Munchies. Got to defeat the, the ice cream fascist. Got him. All right, Cone. What do you have to say for yourself? Oh, <gasps> it's it's the chocolate ice cream that's really a poop. We're here to stop your men from committing further atrocities. Yeah, this damage is ridiculous. I'm just going from like spell card to spell card. <laughs> all right, my troops, my government, take them away. Take it all away. You can't take this anymore. Yeah, you should have stuck to being a critic. It's easier when you have no responsibilities. All right, violence and chaos have always been a huge part of our world. You've just experienced it through a different position. You can wrestle with your existence at a later time. Come with me. Simmer and the Necromancer want to see you. All right, you're a tyrant. Get with the program and learn how to do all those things with no personal repercussions. That's what the Lord of the Forest did. It's like if Simmer wanted you dead, the zombie would have taken care of you by now. I don't know what she's planning, but you're not dying anytime soon. Hmm. He might become Punished Cone. I'm here for the Punished Cone arc. I wonder if Cone is going to have a redemption arc. Because Cone has been basically one of the most, one of the worst characters. But maybe. Oh! <gasps> they finally fused! 
They did a gatai. The poop is in the cone. All right, let's see. Well, let's let Nickel take over what's left of the world and everything will be fine. Nickel is very good. I didn't think I would like Nickel as much as I do. She's a really nice... Um, Grilla and Simmer are good, but I like their trifecta. If we just left you alone, would you move to Mars? Let's see. As I was designed to manage humans, I would follow my directive and attempt to control the world. Yep. Installation complete. I she's reviewed everything. Let's see. New recipes acquired. Okay, let's see. She's building your desires so she can control you later. Let's see. I also read the three seasons of Captain DUI and a high ranking of... Oh! Three new seasons of Captain DUI. <laughs> she promises, like, hey, you know that show you like? I found three seasons of it in, in the memory bank stores in the capital city. And girl's like, all right, you know what? Maybe we should just let the AI take it. We're just going to let the AI take over. It will be fine. All right, what do you want the cone to do? We need your voice. The terrible things are afoot. We need someone who can speak to and unite the fruits and the vegetables. We need your help to get us out of this dungeon. And to be honest, none of us really understand their culture. Oh, I see. So they're going to use the cone to try to get their message across. I Back in the ancient times, celebrities who went into rehab for their drug addictions would often be more popular after they left rehab. Folks will believe you as long as you admit your mistakes. So everyone loves a repentant villain. All right, this is this is the the redemption arc. All right. New recipes. Hell yeah. Are these the ancestral magic recipes? They were just sitting in a box. If you can see or touch this book, it means you were once my pupil. Let this book bring you hope and courage in the darkest of times. I dedicate this to you, the pupils I am most proud of. Take the ancestral magical, the ancestral magic recipe aptitude test. Okay, so you have to prove that you're good enough for the book. Uh oh. What's happening? Oh, putrid. We have to make this dish. It's the monster. All right, let's see. Detecting a shift of energy from the soul power station to a high density core of magic in the city center. The barrier is also being siphoned away and transformed into pure mana. That can't be good. I'm unable to determine its purpose. Even with our combined effort, we have no means of stopping this massive operation. That seems bad. Is this, are we too late? No. No, Cohen, you can't give into nihilism. Kimmel, I, I never thought that I would be annoyed to hear someone talk like me. Wait, pure mana? If we have pure mana, we can make the special dish. We can make the special ancestral recipe. Power at their university and a lot of students died. Simmer had to keep bringing them back to life and Grill had to keep heating uh, heating up the building. Turns out the reason the power went out is because the Dean was stealing power to run a crypto farm. What, what a great game. What a prescient and beautiful experience Dungeon Munchies is. So we're going to use Putrid's power to make food. Sounds good. You've awakened my awkwardness detection modules from hibernation. All right. Yeah. 
you know, it actually has actually happened. The government officials call, like having rolling blackouts and everything. All right, so everything's falling apart. I can't believe it, but not long ago, I was bickering with you about how to maintain this place, and now everything I've tried to protect is turning into a, into a massive mess. And now we get Grill's moment of introspection. So her whole arc is that she tried to be... Basically, she tried to organize the dungeon into what she considered to be a balanced ecosystem and basically caused all the problems with the plants and the vegetables. Her intentions were good, but without someone to check her, she doesn't. she's not particularly good at not getting lost in her own head and then simmer helps balance her out and by kind of keeping her head out of the clouds oh boy back in the day at first it was housing prices the fertility crisis and pollution but after match came along everything centered around the third world war and the magical ruling class And after the war ended, the short-lived peace was interrupted by the sun leaving the solar system, and our attention and our values have always shifted around based on changes in our environment. But that's life. The only thing that's constant in life is transition. So we shouldn't focus on whether something was worthwhile or not. Purpose, meaning, and worth come from the burning passion inside of our hearts. It comes from fully immersing ourselves in the here and now, and that is something worthwhile. That's actually good. Yeah. Simmer is very prone to getting caught in the depression sauce, and then Grill will be here like, hey, Girl, be be gentler to yourself. And Grill gets too caught up in like planning and being too heady about things and getting carried away. And Simmer will keep her like, hey, you need you need to focus on the here and now instead of stressing about the future. And so yeah, Simmer gets depressed about the past, and Grill gets anxious about the future, and they keep each other anchored in the present. I just I think they should kiss. All right, Nicole, what do you got for me? Yeah, between Grill and Simmer, you have one functional woman. <laughs> so everyone's evacuating into escape pods now. All right, let's let's do it. So we're doing a suicide mission. I thought we were just doing a hot pot. <laughs> I mean, it is the ideal relationship. Like, I, I like their dynamic a lot. And for a relatively short game, it's like, what, like 10, 15 hours, depending on how much you want, time you want to put into it. The characters are really well developed and really well thought out. And their interactions and how they develop over the course of the different acts are all just really fun. Perhaps the meaning of life is to die without regrets. Okay, I think I got that one down. Oh, here it is. Yeah, like, Nickel and Zombie are basically just the, the the kids of these two women that, like, individually cannot keep their shit together. But here here's a moment of vulnerability. I want to thank you three for the bottom of my heart. Knowing you has been the greatest joy in my life. I thought I would break down again, like, on the eve of the last apocalypse, but that hasn't happened. That's because this time I have all of you by my side. You all gave me the courage to face anything that this world throws at me. Also, I'm sorry that I failed you. I said I'd bring you into a new world and give you new bodies, but I'm afraid I can't make that happen. But that's okay. It's normal for business owners to lay out unrealistic visions, fail spectacularly, and take no responsibility. <laughs> ah, despite being mute and emotionally inscrutable, he's really damn good at pulverizing any troublesome enemies. And without his help, we wouldn't even be here. So, it's time. We're all going to work together and we're going to make the, uh, a cool weapon that's going to instant kill Putrid. Alright, time to make it happen. We're going to make this sick magical weapon and it's going to fix everything. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the mushrooms have, of course the mushrooms have faces. Everything is sentient after all. Alright, oh shit, we're at the, um, that's all the recipes. Oh, that's wild. So if you run out of mana while using magic weapons, you can use health instead. That's powerful. Raise shield attack by damage by 100, block an attack within point five. Yo, that gives you... You get parries? Here it is. The Kiwi Jam Sandwich. With shotgun type weapon, deal plus 100 damage and knock back against enemies in close range. Oh yeah, baby. 
Oh yeah, baby. Hit enemies with your bare fist to mark them. Mark enemies explode in two seconds? It is Kenshiro. You get to do exploding heart techniques on people. All right, I'm, I'm going to max this out here. All right. Shotgun type weapons do additional damage. Let's let's get it. Yeah, I think it's I'm going to let's 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 build a let's make a Kinshiro build. Let's give it a try. All right, let's see. I probably need more insight, but all right. So, this is barehanded. Enables fart kick. Okay. Enables 100 crack fist. Let's take powdered shark cartilage. All right, so this let's look at this again. Deal 5% additional magic damage for every 10% of... Oh, that's ridiculous. Because this fixes it to 1, so it's treated as having like a 99% reduced health. That's ridiculous. The combos in this game open up so much fun stuff. So what else do I want to throw in to my Kinshiro build? In okay, move speed, definitely. And where's the one that... De yeah, increased damage output based on move speed. And... Blood Lotus? Yeah, Blood Lotus T. I just fuck I'm the motherfucking fist of the North Star. <laughs> All right, time to play God Hand. I it's me. I'm the fighting food on. All right, let's do it. So she, her incantation to pitch to them is just to say that it's basically to promise them that a better world is possible and break them out of nihilism. Fart kick! Fart kick! This is sick. Okay, this is this is incredibly cool. All right, we're gonna do it. I also love the pan has a face. <laughs> As the laborer spends time toiling over that which does not belong to him, he only isolates himself from the world, but also his own soul. That's literally a quote from Capital. Kamul is literally quoting Capital. <laughs> He's talking about alienation under capitalism. I love this game. Put a cover on everything. Don't use the highest power setting and don't leave metal utensils inside. It's like, all right, before we begin cooking, remember that our, our positions in mind, that way we'll be able to better keep things in order. Once we get the, rit uh, the ritual started, we cannot stop. All right. Let us begin the ritual. Let's make this legendary dish. Oh, this rules! Oh shit, I get to be Kenshiro and punch and bake the, the legendary dishes! Can we cook and fight at the same time? Oh, we can. He's an s rank magical chef, damn it. Look at that face! Do you know what he's saying? Nothing is impossible! Let's cook! Yeah, this is this is kind of sick, actually. They explode for huge damage. This is incredible. All right, 
Oh, each so everyone leaves dishes for you, and then you have to drop them off into the walk in the center. Okay. So I'm just like, I have to grab everything and then toss everything in here. Alright, Grills, finish a dish. Grill, give me your dish. Toss it in here. This is so funny. I am just doing Fist of the North Star shit. <laughs> this is so good. Exploding constantly. They even have the exploding heart countdown. Oh, it... that's funny. So the the whole everyone has their their way of cooking. So Simmer has the the hot pot. Grill has has her her own form of magic cooking, and then for Nickel it's just a microwave. Oh, hell yeah. We're about halfway done. Is this what opening a restaurant's like? I'd rather be unemployed. I oh, know, we got this. Oh, yes, the plants! The plants! Super Ultra Fruit Medley! Yes! Get it one! Let's go! The plants that form get a robo. Him and the poopa on top of his head explained everything to us. They helped us believe that Cohen, like, be like, so Cohen came back to his senses. You're trying your best, even as everything collapses around you. You have earned our respect. Get her one, get her two, get her three. Oh, we shall explode for justice. The radish is still a dick. <laughs> Yo, let's go! Ooh. Okay, unarmed builds are the best part thing in this game. See, these should explode. Alright, get the meat. Oh. Gotcha. Oh no! Grill! Grill! Well, Grill's fine. Simmer's taking damage. It's fine, they'll just all explode. Okay, I've got the... I got the instant ramen. Okay, we're we'll cool. And activate my fart kicks. I'm kicking them for like 4,000 damage. What the hell? Alright. This is so sick. Alright. Gotta mark a couple of these enemies so they all explode. And almost done. Oh cool. I think I got this uh I got the boss on the first try. Nickel. Emma. Okay, got it! Yes! What is the legendary dish? You've completed the aptitude test. I am Cosmic Bubble Tea, a delicious calorie rich drink that transcends time and space. I can only be summoned by the greatest of magical chefs. You have been approved for the Rift Project. What? The Rift Project was designed to protect select individuals in the case of total destruction. To learn more, please feel free to speak to me. Alright, is this going to be our way out? Is the magic bubble tea going to help us? 
Drink me and I will take you into Rift Space, and then I will explain everything. If you are unable to drink, simply soak yourself in my lo in my fluids. <laughs> but please don't activate me if Putrid is active. That will cause the whole thing to fail. So like, oh, oh no. No, I'm not going to let this, ha it can't end like this. <gasps> it's time to explode. No. 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 Simmer, get your butt in the bubble tea. All right. Oh, it seems like everything just went, went got bad. And now Rift Space has been corrupted by Putrid. That's probably bad, right? Alright, let's see. Created by the world's greatest spatial mage, the President of Suck. Our mission is to find new ways to expand space and new civilization off-world. Okay. So what are they doing? It's to locate a suitable Earth parallel. Okay, opening a rift to another universe takes a lot out of my soul. During each test, I can only manage a tiny opening before boarding. Earth either didn't exist or was completely uninhabitable in almost all the universes that we observed. We finally found the Earth that was with the appropriate climate conditions in the 54th universe, but we could not detect the presence of any civilization. All we saw were the ruins of great cities. So they send in a scouting party. Sample 01. It's a scrap of eerie paper. Oh, great. This is where Putrid came from. Souls cry out in anguish as they cannot behold as they behold the horror of their existence. We reached out to each and every wailing world and released a drop of hit. He reached out to every wailing world and released a copy of his soul, a drop of it. Transdimensional subject C1, C00 poses a potential existential threat to human civilization. It was first spotted by the Supreme President in another parallel universe. C00 can detect mental anguish. A civilization will draw its attention once it reaches a certain threshold for collective anguish and suffering. Once it targets a certain universe, it splits parts of its soul and inserts it into that universe. While we have no data of the soul shard itself, the data from other universes suggests planetary destruction or at the very least, total extinction of the human race. Ah, damn, that sucks. So basically, they attracted the attention of Putrid, who is this extra-dimensional entity, by basically causing unhappiness, and their own policies made people kind of hate their lives, which attracted... Yeah, this is bad. All right, I got the presidential keycard. Yo, cool weapons! Okay. Supernova. Hold and release... Alright, all the final weapons. Hold and release to rip a hole through space-time that hurts nearby enemies. Normal attacks inflict 150 blade damage. Gain 40 shield points. Shoot stars at an enemy. Uh, nebula. Fire arrows that ignore gravity. Hold for one second to fully draw the bow. Tartarus. Summon up to one demon by harvesting soul shards from the dead enemies. Harvesting more shards heals and helps them grow. You know, I'm going to be real. These seem pretty cool, but also they are not as cool as being Kenshiro. All right, I'm gonna switch back to my scythe build then. If they're really that cool, we're gonna we'll give we're gonna go back to the scythe. We're gonna go to scythe town. Tartarus in the bone zone, and I think we're all good there. All right, let's let's have at it. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm going to throw on the cartilage. Cartilage seems like it's the best thing i found so far. Corpse explosions are pretty good. Yeah, the extra shots are doing nothing right now. So let's throw in... 
we've got the cartilage. Let's throw in... I don't need watermelon juice. Don't need this either. Let's get in blood lotus and the powdered tea. There we go. Oh, now we're going to find out the truth of who the the this, this character is. All right. Who are you? If you are viewing this, you're not far away from saving everyone. The coordinates to the colony world are saved in my, or should I say, your zombie head. Pass this information on to Simmer, and she'll be able to read those coordinates. Putrid is also after those coordinates. His goal is to activate the Stargate to reach the colony world. That is the reason why Putrid schemed to have you come out here. His believers do not understand cooking and recipes. The contents and information I have revealed can, cannot be kept from Putrid. He, is, he cannot influence the space, but he can observe us. He will pursue you the moment you return to the world. Hmm. You're welcome. I know that I must like that's the whole standing for the player, but you're welcome. It's time to save the world. Oh no. Corn, no, pineapples. <gasps> Tyler, Emma, come on. Brill. No. No, I'm going to save everyone. I'm going to save everyone. No, things are going to get better. We're all, we're all going to eat food together. And it's going to be great. No, I am not going to yield to Putrid. I guess that's what I have to do. My fingers are crossed, though. Peter will completely eradicate all souls, freeing us forever from the cruel cycle of birth and of death and rebirth. This is the moment we've been preparing for. Let's do it. Let's do it. Joke's on them. I'm not going to let this happen. Oh, cool. It's me. This is me. It's a selfie. I'm much cuter in Live 2D. Wait. The zombie can talk? The zombie's been able to talk this whole time? Why are my memories filled with recipes and cooking? Oh! Ah! It's been Simmer the whole time! So she possessed me right before I jumped into Rift Space. Konosimada! <laughs> you know what to do, Chef. This music is so good. For the sake of all those on the other side, do not let them activate the Stargate. I'm gonna save ya. I'm gonna save ya, Grill and Simmer. Oh boy.
Oh, it's a... Oh, no, it's a... It's a platformer! Well, I've got my, my super cool demons right now. And everything's everything's coming at Millhouse. Scythe builds remain the, the strongest. Oh boy, oh boy. Dogs in the you know I did feed them and I can't write their mind. Alright. Get through this last section here. Alright, got through one of them. Okay. So who's freed? Simmer! Yeah! No! Alright, got a free grill. That's rude. All right, I'm just gonna have to focus on dodging and let my demons take care of most of this. Let my health regenerate a little bit. Let the demons take care of everything. It'll be fine. Yep, there we go. I've got my my cool <laughs> I've got my cool skeletons and these demons, and everything's everything's coming up Millhouse. Is Simmer okay? The Stargate. We were in the middle of cooking. No, we're gonna do it. Take a quick nap. Take like a take a power nap. Everything's gonna be fine. Got one more spell card I need to worry about. Okay, how bad is this going to be? Not that bad. Okay. All that time playing Toho is finally paying off. Alright. Oops. That's some damage. And, okay, okay, okay. Got it! All right, big finale, big finale. Have I defeated Putrid? Almost. Putrid is taking huge amounts of damage in the cutscene. Okay. All right, my skeletons are gonna keep me safe here. Am I just fine? Is this like... I guess I'm, I can just chill here, and the demons will kill it? <laughs> Alright. Grab some more soul energy. Yeah, yeah we're, 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 we're chilling. Big chilling. I have a feeling that this boss was not designed with this gameplay build in mind. When you don't have to put when you only focus on dodging, this is actually pretty straightforward. Whoop, whoop. These demons do be going though. I mean they're they're hitting him for like 2.5 to 3,000 damage. I'm getting I'm hitting 10,000 damage per second with them.
no, no, you have to believe in, in hope. All right, final phase. Here we go. No, my food! I need to... Attack this and... Okay. Oh no! Oh no! Error messages! I gotta close these windows! Enemy pop-ups is, is definitely a uh, under underutilized archetype. IMHO. All right. No. Oh come on. Quit hacking with my screen. I do love the design of this final boss. That it's like pressing the, the tab button is like very, very meta. Even like, I mean, the game canonically is the, the entity that this character, the zombie summons is you as the player. Yep, every, stop pressing. Oh God, I got called out. I don't know, I'm gonna show up on scrub quotes for that one. That's me. I'm the scrub. Yeah, I won. Yeah, I'm happy about it. Like, it's scary to have choice. And it's scary... have to make decisions but you can do it i believe in these guys there's an there's a there's something you can do here you can make a better future for yourself what do i know i'm just a zombie with with four hands all right whom's are you So in response to the loss of his wife, the Supreme President became bitter and nihilistic, but his kid decided to choose hope and started hanging out with Girl and Simmer. Let's, let's speedrun this. It's actually very fun storytelling. Oh no, the soul pods. 
the suck did not construct these underground suck structures. Hmm. Lieutenant of Robot, according to our measurements, once 0.5% of your mentioned, the Earth will no longer be inhabitable. Abandoning the Earth is the, like, the Ark project will be our final attempt to get out of here. It calls for the President to open the Stargate for a short period of time. Government officials and a thousand loyal and high-ranking mages will pass through the Stargate and arrive at the Colony World. The rest of the population will be left behind. So this is how all this happened. Their goal was just to leave everyone behind and to run away. To try to flee from Putrid. And it doesn't look like it worked out. Oh! The Utter Moron's Guide to Necromancy. I kept reading and rereading it while I was in the Rift space. Then actually I have a question about the skin discoloration during the zombification process. Is there any way to fix that? So this is the zombie, the main character, hatching their own plan. They reconnect with Simmer, the necromancer, and they figure out what they can possibly do here. Yep, here we go. I want to try doing something another way. For once in my life, I want to sacrifice myself for someone else. I hadn't thought about that element of this character. For this game being like so in when the metaphor of you know sacrifice like sacrificing others for yourself, becoming a zombie is them sacrificing themselves for other people. Do you know how long it took us to find you? You're contractually obligated to stay alive and be in my employment forever. Thank you, Simmer. I'm glad that's her reason for keeping you around. I'm contractually obligated not to die. I am the kitchen goddess for the city Omlias. Let's see, we need you to defeat the demon lord. Your first mission is to clear the field of grass slimes, which have a 25% chance of dropping apples. Return to me once you've collected three apples and a frying pan. Oh, it's been an entire year? Oh, it's Rob! That was the second time I saved your ass. Did you think your life would end in darkness? Denied. No. Good endings only? Right, so Professor Shroom learned about the space you were in turned in after connecting with the Putrid Network. Simmer and Grill then modified the cosmic bubble tea to create an opening through which Rob beamed you here. Rob only participated in the final step, though. We shouldn't give him too much credit. <gasps> Professor Shroom! Professor Shroom! Oh, so Dungeon Munchies was also, it was the whole, the name of their restaurant. Aww. Like, I'm not making stuff up right, they're pretty gay. Alright, here ends the final chapter. Thank you, Simmer and Grill have a chance to cook in another day in this dreary and chaotic universe. 
and your journey ends here for now. Before you leave this dimension, please feel free to chat, explore, or return to the past to collect any items that you missed. This was... This was a wonderful game. All right, let's 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 wrap up the, the outro dialogue and see where everyone is, what everyone's up to. All right, let's let's see what comes on. Oh, yay, the staff credits are rolling. <laughs> so the three skeletons are created from Simmer's memories because there was nothing left of them. And it's like, well, like, well, well, how would she know about that? It's like, don't worry. When Emma was alive, she used to tell me everything. And by that everything, I mean everything, Tyler. <laughs> oh, Tyler. This is so good. All right. What's up, Nickel? Oh wait, no, Lick Spittles and Potatoes polls have been even now, but Radish is quickly gaining popularity. If this trend continues, Radish is gonna win the, the election! So all the plants are generating power now, but they basically live in VR chat. Well, that's like moderately more humane. No cone. Oh, and they can leave any time and they have choices. I mean, his last name might as well be Blevins, Tyler Blevins. Spittle draws his own election posters. Oh, no, he traced. Lick Spittle traces artwork. Anyone who traces can't possibly be an honest person. We can't vote for him. Fruits and vegetables were once at each other's throats, but now all they do is argue about trivial things like tracing art. That is a sign of an advancing civilization and my effective rule. Okay, that's beautiful. Now what we need to do is just lay on the sofa and watch TV for an entire century. We gotta cook food to watch TV though. Oh, <gasps> wait, they do have people they can cook for. Big Vine and Clifford can eat. Spittle. AI and computers can eat too? This is the best outcome. This is the best. They can't taste anything, but like Clifford and Big Vine can. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking gay. Clifford! Clifford is eating and he's getting food everywhere. And as they cook, they feel joy. And when they feel joy, it replenishes, it replenishes their mana. And it's, uh, and that's why Putrid spins all the false hope to people to take advantage of their mana recovery. Yeah, this is gay. Like, wait, if you're fully recovered, why are you still blue? Because it's a good color on me, don't you agree? All right, let's let's go back. I want to hear about uh, Lickspittle quitting the metaverse. Uh, 
Ah, the plants have become streamers in their virtual universe. They're playing a game inside a larger game and streaming it in-game. They've also developed plant pornography. <laughs> Why did they censor the statement? Has it always been in the open? That's incredible. That's incredible. The plants have invented streaming and adult pornography. The alcohol spirit. Oh, it's Captain DUI. I am Hazmat Man. Do you know the real culprit behind the nation's skyrocketing housing prices? Human nature. It is our human nature to gather mindlessly in cities and drive up demand. No, it's capitalism. Are you aware of the damage that you and the Sock had on our entertainment industry with censorship? Aww. Aww, Nickel gets to eat. That's really, that's really nice. This is, I got like a stupid big dumb smile on my face. This is such a good ending for this. I'm just glad that Big Vine gets to hang out and just like watch anime. Look at the, look how gay this is too. Simmer's like, what do you mean you want to have a party? I thought you didn't like parties. I still do, but you know, I know you like them. And I want you to have the things that you love. And I want to make you happy. Oh, that's gay. That's gay. Clifford. I love you, Clifford. That's so good. I'm so happy with all this. And you get to cook everything at the end. Make all the weapons you might have missed. Teleport anywhere. Reset bosses. Yeah, it took me about eight hours to beat the game. And now here's all my stats. How many times did I die? Did I do a million? Yeah! I died 32 times. Well, that's a lot of damage. And that's the end of the game. There's something else to do. So, um, I guess this is it for me tonight. I'll have to figure out something else to stream tomorrow night, but... Thank you all for, for hanging out for this. This is, um... I know, like, probably not, like... The most popular game to stream, but it's a game that I I, I love. I, I, and I, I'm really happy that some of y'all even gave this game a shot over these streams like that makes me super happy it's like i said it's it's rough around the edges the gameplay maybe isn't the best or the most refined in the world but like it's really good it's really really good the music is good the, the vibes are good it fucking rules yes it absolutely 
fucking rules. I love it. Absolutely love it. And I'm, I'm glad I was able to play through this and hang out with y'all while doing it. It makes it that much better. Well, I am going to send y'all over to Nana, who is playing Eternal Return. And I... This is, yeah, this is really good. And now basically they get to hang out and cook and have an ongoing party forever. How sick is that? All right, I'm sending you all over to Nana. And then I need to go finish my own dinner because my partner just cooked for me. So I don't think there could be a better way to end this. Well, that's, um, that's it. That's Dungeon Munchies. That's in the books. Thank you all again uh, for sharing this. This is a very special game. And give it a shot if you want to. If you, have, if you have a chance. And even if you don't, just remember, Big Vine wants you to form a union, and Clifford loves you, and I guess the mushroom is cool too, and these two are gay, and Nickel and Rob get to hang out together. This is just like, everyone's endings are really good. I'm sorry, I, I could gush about this for a long time. Anyway, I need to go eat before this pizza gets cold. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye.